Hey everyone, finished watching the next VR Troopers episode, The Old Switcheroo, the last episode on Disc 2 of Season 1, Volume 2, so that means we're only one disc away from Season 2. That's great, because I seem to remember Season 2 being a lot better than Season 1. This episode's okay, though. Starts off, Ryan's reminiscing about when he got Jeb for the first time. Woody and Caitlin are talking about an interview she'll be conducting with a famous biologist, Dr. Junger. He's created a transference device to transfer the positive elements of plants to other plants, mainly. And then Woody reminds her that the newspaper is having a fifth anniversary party and to bring her friends later. Then meanwhile, Grimlord is making plans to steal the device that Dr. Junger is working on. Caitlin, along with Ryan, Jeb, and JB arrive at Dr. Junger's office, but Jeb isn't allowed in, so Ryan stays with him outside. JB and Caitlin go inside to interview Dr. Junger. He's about to show them the transference device and finds out it's been stolen. And this is one of the weirder things in this episode. This episode about a body swap. The device has been stolen, so the procedure is to evacuate the building. That doesn't seem productive or helpful in any way. <laughs> If something's been stolen, something uh, that's, like, really important like this, why would you evacuate the building? It seems like you'd lock down the building, keep everyone inside, in the hopes that perhaps the person who took it is still in the building. Or if somebody picked it up by accident, that they don't walk out with it. Why in the world do they evacuate for a theft? Unless they think whoever took it is still in the building and they might use it on someone. That's never really brought up, though, so I don't know what exactly the logic is here. Why in the world would you evacuate due to a theft? That, whatever, JB and Caitlin call Ryan outside on the little communicator thing and tell him what's happening. Ryan sees a suspicious woman leaving out the back, everybody else is leaving out the front. So he goes to confront her, and she turns into a Skug. More Skugs show up and attack. Grimlord orders them to fire the device at Ryan. Grimlord, for some reason, thinks that firing the device at Ryan, and only Ryan, will somehow transfer the powers Ryan has to Grimlord. Okay. So does the device copy the, the power onto the device? I think that's the idea of how it works, but they don't really make it clear. Anyway, Jeb steps in front of the beam. The others come out and find out that Ryan and Jeb have switched brains and voices. They go to Hart's lab, and Professor Hart already knows what's going on for some reason. This is kind of unusual. Usually, Professor Hart is not, like, aware of everything going on outside of the lab. It's not like Zordon, where he has the viewing globe, and if the rangers go to... Uh, Zordon and he knows what's going on. It's presumable that, you know, he was watching the viewing globe. With this, why does Hart know already? Hart works on a way of switching them back. The troopers go to the anniversary party at the newspaper in the meantime. The mayor and his wife are there, and Jeb, still in Ryan's body, remembers his old shtick of playing pranks on them. Uh, his pranks usually involved knocking over the mayor's wife. I thought this was going to lead to... Some hijinks, but... Nope. The mayor and his wife may as well not even be in this episode. Kind of weird they brought them back... 40-some episodes later. Like, long after they've stopped using those characters. I'm assuming this episode was probably shot really early on, back when they were still regulars or something, and then they moved it to the end, because this is one of those weird episodes where Percy isn't here, but they use the communicators. So I'm thinking, for whatever reason, they didn't want the communicator devices to be used early on in the show? Inside the party, Jeb, still in Ryan's body, goes crazy over the food. Then they get a call from Professor Hart saying they need to go. He's found the device's location. Caitlin takes uh, Jeb and Ryan's body outside. JB and Caitlin transform to retrieve the device. Uh, Ryan doesn't want to risk trying to, or well, Jeb doesn't want to risk trying to transform because he doesn't know if he can. JB and Caitlin fight a new robot, Mechanoid. Ryan really wants to help, so Jeb tries to transform. It works, but Jeb is still the one in control of Ryan's body. Grimlord sees what he thinks is Ryan in the Metalder suit, so he sends Decimator to attack. Jeb has no idea what he's doing, so he doesn't try to fight back. 
Then at uh, Professor Hart's lab, he makes a little remote control device for Ryan so he can help Jeb fight off Decimator. JB and Caitlin defeat Mechanoid. They get the device, but Grimlord destroys it. If I can't have it, no one can. And de destroying it somehow transfers Jeb and Ryan back to the correct bodies. At the dojo, a delivery arrives for Ryan. Several pizzas, burgers, fast food, Chinese food. Uh, apparently, Jeb ordered it all while in Ryan's body. He knows how to work a phone. Actually, Jeb knew how to work a phone before this. He could even talk to people over the phone. Why did it... Why did he need to be Ryan to order stuff? Okay, episode. It's a body swap episode, and those are usually pretty fun. They give... Uh, the actors a chance to stretch their acting muscles, and it is a pretty fun episode with Brad Hawkins acting like Jeb. Also, the lip sync is uh, done pretty well. One of the weirder things, there's never any resolution with the device and Dr. Younger. As far as Dr. Younger knows, the, the device is still stolen. Does anybody tell him that, oh, uh, Grimlord destroyed it, you'll have to make another one. Grimlord's plan here was pretty reckless. Like, uh... So would he have ended up in Ryan's body? Would Ryan end up in his body? Because that could potentially be a problem for, like, both of them. Like, if uh, Grimlord is in Ryan's body, the troopers are right there, Professor Hart's right there, and then uh, Ryan in his body, like, Grimlord is pretty strong on his own. Back in defending Darkheart, Ryan and Darkheart were trying to fight Grimlord, and Grimlord was able to just sit there and throw tentacle robot things at them, and they couldn't even touch him. So, if Ryan was in Grimlord's body, he could probably control some of the minions. Like, the minions might not all know that uh, Grimlord's brain was switched into Ryan's body. The mayor and his wife don't really play a big part. They're barely a cameo. Also, Percy doesn't show up, so yeah, it's one of those weird episodes where Percy doesn't show up, the communicators do, and then also the mayor and his wife show up. So, it really makes me think that this was one of those episodes shot really early on and then pushed to the end. Uh, Grimlord actually has a reason to give up this time. Most VR Trooper episodes end with uh, Grimlord just giving up. <laughs> like, they'll defeat the monster, and no matter what Grimlord's plan is, he's like, ah, well, whatever, end of the episode, I give up. This time, though, it makes sense. Uh, the driving force is the transference device. With it destroyed, he doesn't really have a reason to keep going. Brad Hawkins' performance as Jeb is the highlight of this episode. So that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.